Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we're going to be finding the area of a rose petal bounded by a polar curve. If you like the video, then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. Let's look at how we find the area of a polar region shaped like rose petals. To do this, I've sketched the polar graph of r equals 3 cos 3 theta. Before we find this area, let's get a better understanding of polar curves using a graphing tool. I've plotted the polar region of r equals n multiplied by cos k theta, and I've set values for n and k to be equal to 3. This gives us the polar region in our example. Note here that n denotes the length of each petal, and in our example, the length of each petal is 3. Let's change the length to 2 and see how it affects the region. I've now changed the value of n to be 2. And as you can see from the polar region, the length of each petal is now 2. I've now changed the value of n to be negative 2. As you can see, the region looks a little different. However, it still has 3 petals and the length of each petal is 2. So the rule here is that the length of each petal is the absolute value of n. Now let's look at the value of k. In our example shown here, we have a value of k equal to 3. Note that 3 is an odd number and we have 3 petals. Let's see what happens when we change the value of k to be 4. So k is now 4 and as you can see, we now have 8 petals or 2 times the value of k. Note here that k is an even number. Now let's increase the value of k to 5 and see how it affects the region. k is now 5, an odd number. And as you can see, our region has 5 petals. So the rule here is, if k is an odd number, our region will consist of k petals. If k is an even number, our region will have 2 times k petals. Now we have a better understanding of our region, let's look at how we find its area. We know that to find the area across a polar region R, we need to take the double integral, which effectively sums infinitesimally small slices of area, which we know as dA. This translates to the region being defined by an inner integral, which integrates in the R direction between two values of R, and an outer integral, which defines the region as we rotate about theta between two values of theta. The infinitesimally small pieces of area are defined by r dr d theta. So for the inner integral, we can see that it begins at the origin, so where r is equal to 0, and extends out to the polar curve, so where r is equal to 3 cos 3 theta. To find the limits of theta, let's look at how the polar region is plotted using the plotting tool. The region begins at r is equal to 3, and the first half of one petal is created when r is equal to 0. Using this knowledge, we can work out the limits of theta. So our polar curve is r equals 3 times cos 3 theta. So the polar curve starts where r is equal to 3. So if we substitute r equals 3, we have 3 equals 3 times cos 3 theta. And dividing both sides of the equation by 3, we have 1 equals cos 3 theta. Now when theta equals 0, the cosine of 3 times 0 is the cosine of 0, which gives us a value of 1 and therefore satisfies this equation. So we know that one half of one petal is completed when r is equal to 0. So substituting 0 for r in our equation r equals 3 cos 3 theta, we have 0 is equal to 3 cos 3 theta. If we now use the value of theta is equal to pi by 6 radians, cos 3 times pi by 6 radians is equal to cos of pi over 2, which gives us a value of 0 and therefore satisfies that equation. So one half of one petal is between the angles of theta equals 0 and theta is equal to pi divided by 6. Using the fact that the petals are symmetrical, the other half of the petal can be seen between angles theta equals 0 and angles theta equals minus pi by 6. So we can now mark in the limits of our outer integral, which go from theta equals minus pi by 6 to theta equals pi by 6. 
And then to obtain the value of all three petals, we need to multiply this result by three. Now let's evaluate the double integral. So beginning with the inner integral, we want to evaluate the integral of r dr between r is equal to zero and r is equal to three cos three theta. So the antiderivative of r is r squared over two, and we need to evaluate it between zero and three cos three theta. If we plug in three cos three theta for r, we have nine multiplied by cos squared three theta divided by two. And if we plug in the zero for r, we have minus zero. So this all evaluates to nine divided by two multiplied by cos squared three theta. We can now work on the outer integral, which is nine divided by two multiplied by the integral from theta is minus pi by six to theta is equal to pi by six of cos squared three theta d theta. To evaluate the integral of cos squared three theta d theta, we're going to use the trig identity cos squared x equals one plus cos two x all divided by two. If we now let x equal three theta, we have cos squared three theta is equal to one plus cos six theta all divided by two. We've now transformed our original integral into two integrals which are more easily integrated. So we now have nine divided by four multiplied by the integral and theta is minus pi over six to theta is pi over six of one d theta plus nine over four multiplied by the integral from theta is equal to minus pi over six to theta is equal to pi over six of cos six theta d theta. So evaluating the first integral, the antiderivative of one d theta is theta and we need to multiply that by nine divided by four. We can now evaluate this between the limits of minus pi over six and plus pi over six. So we have nine divided by four multiplied into the bracket of pi over six minus minus pi over six, which evaluates to three pi divided by four. Now moving on to the second integral, we have nine divided by four multiplied by the integral from theta is minus pi by six to theta is pi by six of cos six theta d theta. Now to evaluate this, we're going to be using u substitution. So the integral of cos six theta d theta, we're going to let u equal six theta. So du by d theta is equal to six, and therefore it follows that du divided by six is equal to d theta. If we substitute for six theta and d theta in the original expression, we have one sixth multiplied by the integral of cos u du, and the antiderivative of cos u is sine u. So we have one sixth multiplied by sine u plus constant of integration, which we call c1. And if we substitute back in for u, where u is six theta, we left with one sixth multiplied by sine six theta plus constant of integration. If we now take our antiderivative of one sixth multiplied by sine six theta and multiplied by nine divided by four, we have nine divided by 24 multiplied by sine six theta. And we need to evaluate this between minus pi by six and plus pi by six. So if we plug in pi by six for theta, we have nine over 24 multiplied by the sine of pi, which is zero minus and if we plug in minus pi by six for theta, we have sine of minus pi, which again is zero, which we multiply by nine over 24 and we get zero. So we have zero minus zero, which is in fact zero. So we've now found the area of a single petal by evaluating this integral. And it's three pi by four plus zero, which is three pi by four. And to find the area of all three petals, it's three times the area of a single petal. So it's three times three pi by four, which gives us nine pi by four, which is our final answer. Thank you.